This is the Public Broadcasting Service in Cleveland. You are watching your community television station. This is WVIZ TV. Christmas was out of the question. We were barely staying alive. On Christmas Eve, my father was very silent during the evening meal. Then he surprised and startled me by turning to me and saying, let's take a walk. He had never suggested such a thing before and moreover, it was a very cold winter's night. I was even more surprised when he said, let's go down to 149th Street and Westchester Avenue. My heart leapt within me. That was the section where all the big stores were, where at Christmas time, Open push carts full of toys stood packed end to end for blocks at a stretch. On other Christmas Eves, I had often gone there with my aunt. And from our tour of the carts, she had gathered what I wanted the most. My father had known of this, of course, and I joyously concluded that this walk could mean only one thing. He was going to buy me a Christmas present. beside myself with delight and an inner relief. It had been a bad year for me, that year of my aunt's going, and I wanted a Christmas present terribly. Not a present merely, but a symbol, 
a token of some sort. I needed some sign from my father or mother that they knew what I was going through and cared for me as much as my aunt and my grandfather did. I'm sure they were giving me what mute signs they could, but I did not see them. The idea that my father had managed a Christmas present for me in spite of everything filled me with a sudden peace and lightness of heart I had not known in months. We hurried on, our heads bent against the wind, to the cluster of lights ahead that was 149th Street and Westchester Avenue. Those lights seemed to me the brightest lights I had ever seen. father's coat, I started down the line of pushcarts. There were all kinds of things that I wanted, but since nothing had been said by my father about buying a present, I would merely pause before a pushcart to say, with as much control as I could muster, look at that chemistry set, or there's a stamp album, or look at the printing press. Each time, my father would pause and ask the pushcart man the price. Then, without a word, we would move on to the next pushcart. he would pick a toy of some kind and look at it and then at me as if to suggest this might be something I might like. But I was 10 years old and a good deal beyond just a toy. My heart was set on a chemistry set or a printing press. There they were on every pushcart we stopped at. But the price was always the same and soon I looked up and so we were nearing the end of the line. Only two or three more pushcars remained. My father looked up too, and I heard him jingle some coins in his pocket. In a flash, I knew it all. He'd gotten together about 75 cents to buy me a Christmas present, and he hadn't dared say so in case there was nothing to be had for so small a sum. As I looked up at him, I saw a look of despair and disappointment in his eyes that brought me closer to him than I had ever been in my life. I wanted to throw my arms around him and say, it doesn't matter, I understand. This is better than a chemistry set or a printing press. I love you. But instead, we stood shivering beside each other for a moment, then turned away from the last two push guards and started silently back home. I don't know why the words remained choked up within me. I didn't even take his hand on the way home, nor did he take mine. We were not on that basis, nor did I ever tell him how close to him I felt that night, that for a little while, the concrete wall between father and son had crumbled away. And I knew that we were two lonely people struggling to reach each other. I came close to telling him many years later, but again the moment passed. Again it was Christmas, and I was on my way to visit him in Florida. My father was a bright and blooming 91 years of age now, and I arrived in Florida with my wife to spend Christmas and New Year's with him. On Christmas Eve, we sat in his living room, and while my wife chatted with his nurse and companion, I sat on a sofa across the room with my father. 
showing him the pictures of his two grandchildren. Suddenly, I felt his hand slip into mine. It was the first time in our lives that either of us had ever touched the other. No words were spoken, and I went right on turning the pages of the picture album, but my hand remained over his. A few years before, I might have withdrawn mine after a moment or two, but now my hand remained. Nor did I tell him what I was thinking and feeling. The moment was enough. It had taken 40 years for the gulf that separated us to close. <laughs> 